Hey, what's up, guys? Um, for those that don't know, if you ever have been a part or watched an exposed video, uh, normally we have like a super dope intro <laughs> that um, Brianna and Lamar did for me. Um, but this one, um, I'm going to start treating exposed um, like an entry to a journal. Um, but um, a journal for the world, I guess. Um, this, um, journey that I'm on, man, has been super interesting, uh, this transition to LA and since being in LA and, um, uh, trying to rebound my heart and, uh, <laughs> get back to a, um, to a good space and also still protect my heart in the area of not allowing my heart to become, uh, something that, uh, that people say, um, but you actually, um, because if you're not careful, you, you'll become, you'll become something that you know that you aren't, um, because you heard, uh, what people have said, or, um, and that can be loved ones. That could be people that don't know you. That can be people that you never have came across before, but they had, they think that they know, uh, a perception of you because they heard something from somebody also that they don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. We take the opinions of people we don't know and then garner opinions about people we also don't know because it buys into some type of concept that we want to believe about someone. Um, but this episode, man, I'm talking about, um, you know, when we do expose, I, you know, like I did one of, you know, expose, I'm mad at God, uh, expose, I self-sabotage everything. And um, this one um, on Exposed, I'm talking about how I hate my heart, <laughs> how I hate my heart. Um, this past uh, Sunday, I had an opportunity to go and to support my big brother, mentor. Um, he had to speak at a at a church and um, the church was um, in D.C. And it's my sister's church, Kalita Forbes, man. She's absolutely amazing super prophetic, super, she's just a teacher preacher. She's also a therapist and she just has this nature about her. And, um, uh, I surprised her. And so when I walked in, she, uh, immediately, you know, had a word for me and, uh, wrecked me immediately, wrecked me immediately. And, um, but she talked about, uh, my heart and she talked about how, um, I cannot, or I should not change my heart. And, um, a lot of times, man, and I don't know if this is you, but you know, have you ever been at a place where you hate the way that you're wired? You hate the way that you think you hate the way that, and, and I know hate is a strong word, but I've been at that place where I hated the way that my heart was set up. Um, there's a level of loyalty. And I think that in our culture, we have a misconception of loyalty nowadays. Um, like, you know, I was raised in the era where snitches get stitches, right? It's like one of those things where you just like, you know, you protect um, um, private conversations or information, uh, just certain things you just don't do. Um, and we're in a culture where it's like, you know, you sell it to the highest bidder um, based upon how interesting the information is. And we... Uh, embody that because it's like, yo, I'll sell out whoever to make whoever look like whatever, because I don't want to do the work that I need to do on myself. Um, but it's crazy to me that we are in a culture where we will praise the snitches and demonize the people that keep their mouth shut. Like, it's crazy. Like, cause if <laughs> If, if two people, if two, let's say like you and your old best friend have a falling out and the person that you were best friends with goes out and tells everybody, everything that you did, how you are, so forth and so on, but you are quiet and you choose not to say anything, they will take everything that they said is that that's true because that person said it and we automatically feel that the first person to speak is the victim but in all actuality sometimes the person that's trying to get the story line out first 
is trying to make sure that whatever comes out after them, that you already garnered a perception or a thought about it before you even heard anything. And there'd be other people like yourself that probably won't say anything. And it's, it's crazy because the person that says nothing gets overlooked while the person that's saying everything is being praised because they said something. But not understanding that the person that's being quiet has just as much information as the person that's talking. Because I, I don't know too many people that's telling all of their business and the other persons is totally silent. We, you know, usually in conversation, it goes both ways. It's where one person shares and the other person shares and the other person shares and the other person shares. So you have, we have to be very careful that, you know, oh, I'm hearing a side or I'm hearing sensitive information, but that person probably has sensitive information too. And so sometimes what I've done is I've hated the way my heart was set up in the context of not perfection. Nothing about me is perfect. I, I remember when I was pastoring, I literally would get in my pulpit and I would tell people like, yo, like I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I make dumb decisions. Um, it's just, I'm different because I get a chance to fail in front of you. I get a chance to make dumb decisions in front of you and you get a chance to look at my decisions, judge me and criticize a calling that you know nothing about. And I still got to show up every single day. Um, and sometimes you want to fire back and sometimes you want to say certain things and sometimes you just want to get as low down as everybody else is. But the reality of it is, is like you can stoop to someone's level, but they're going to beat you with experience. You can go as low as you want to go. You can, you know, as, as messed up as they say certain things like you can do that, but they're going to beat you with experience. They've been, they've been down there doing that. They, they have experience in doing that and you're stepping into it and you're new at it. And so they're going to beat you with it every single time. And I don't know if that's you, man, but I've been at that point where I've literally hated the way that I was wired. And I asked God, like, God, why did you wire me this way? Because some people will look at it as you're being weak. And then some people look at it as like, oh, because you don't say anything and because you do believe in loyalty and keeping people's information, people's information, that you're the weak one. And then you begin to hate the way that you are wired and hate the way that you uh, think and hate the way that you process things. But I've come to a point where as much as I've hated the way that my heart was set up, the ability to forgive, the ability to um, not repay evil with evil, the ability to um, be misunderstood and to sit in that and just be misunderstood. Um, in that I've had to look at it and be like, yo, like I must be weak. And I don't know, like if, You've ever felt that way where you felt like you were weak because you did not respond the way that you wanted to. And you got to sit in the house and and mull over those thoughts and think about what you should have said, what you could have said, what you should have did. Um, and you still choose not to do it. And I really want to encourage each of you with the thought process, like if you do those things and if you hold back and if you bridle your tongue and if you can live in a space of being misunderstood i believe i believe that that's the unction of the holy spirit like the holy spirit begins to like keep you from doing everything that you want to do um but i've 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 man i've i've hated it i've hated it man like um those that have watched my videos before, um, you know, I did a video about um, sexuality and I talked about how I was molested by a man and raped by a woman. Right. Um, two different, two different, two different situations, but same age. I was 13 at both instances. And um, 
for years, like even now at this grown age, I ain't going to say what age, but at this grown age, um, I've asked myself, like, how could you just forgive that and talk back to that family member as if nothing happened? How could you how can you forgive that and see that person and still speak? And like you, you begin to think like I could really I could really like say something and I could really do and. But you can't. And then you start to feel like you're weak and then you start to feel like, yo, like well, anybody can do anything to me and I'm they just going to get over on me and they're just going to. And then you begin to second guess your own ability to stick up for yourself or to speak up for yourself and as a man at times you feel like that's all you have because masculinity as we've been taught is how well you can flaunt your strength and then we begin to think that um strength is only strength when it's on display but a lot of times strength is strength when it's reserved and meekness is strength under control. And the Bible talks about meekness, but we don't have to go there. It's not Bible study. But, you know, it's just one of those things where you begin to think like, man, why am I wired this way? And why can't I do certain things? And why can I express certain things? And why can I do what other what everybody else does? And how come I can't? Ah, and it just drives you crazy. And if And if this is you and this is resonating with you, I just want to tell you, man, like as much as you probably hate your heart, don't resent it. Don't like as much as you hate, as much as you hate, maybe the way that you think or the way that you process things, the way that you feel, the way that you operate, the way that you perceive, whatever, whatever the case may be, don't. Because. You can be viewed as weak, but I believe that God views you as strong. And um, I look at people that are consistently under attack by the content that they put out. I look at other pastors that, you know, are always people are always trying to counsel them. People always got something to say about everything that they do. People always got like it's a challenge in any public leadership capacity to guard your heart. And for you to stay true to who you are, because it's so easy for you to conform to who people want you to be. And people will continue to paint you out to paint you out to be the villain until you become one. And then when you become one, they say, oh, see, 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 I knew I knew. No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't that that person was. It was that that person became because you all you told them that they were. It's the same way. I think like when with us, like raising kids it's like. We call them bad all the time. You're just bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. And then they begin to act out what they have been hearing their entire lives. Word curses and operating from word curses is a real thing. And people, and as much as we talk about manifest in, in our culture, and we talk about, you know, I'm going to keep saying it until it manifests. Do you not understand? We can keep saying things until they manifest in people. And we can say, oh, well, no, like, no, uh-uh, uh, that's not true. No, it's like, because we begin to see what we begin to say. And as long as we say it, we'll see it in them. They could be operating totally different, but we will see it in them because we keep saying it about them. And then we will pick apart everything concerning their lives. And I think that that's the challenge, man, right now. Like we want, we want certain leaders to step up to the plate. We want black leaders. We want, we want leaders to, you know, stick up for our rights. We want this and this, but we got so many leaders that are, that are, Re ref refusing to step up to the plate because they're saying like the moment I say something wrong, they're going to counsel me or the moment I say something that they don't agree with, they're going to have an issue or they're going to pick apart every single flaw of my life. You know, like I think about this often. Um, if, if, if ML King lived in the day of, social media <laughs> would we be 
highlighting his infidelity or will we be still talking about what an amazing leader he is? Because two things can be true. Somebody can have a struggle and they still can be an amazing leader. (laughs) Somebody can have a drinking problem and still be an amazing leader. Somebody can have a cussing problem and still be an amazing leader. Somebody can have uh, questions about their sexuality and still be an amazing leader. Somebody can somebody can be wrong in one area and still be right in another area. And I think that what we tend to do is that we tend to throw everything out with the person. And the challenge always is to continue to guard our hearts. And that's hard. It's hard to do. And, um, and so if this is you and you are at that place where you have regretted the way that your heart is set up, or you regret it the way that you think, or I'm just telling you don't, but I know it's easier said than done. Cause trust me, I live in that space too. And I'm saying that because it's one of those things where, um, you kind of take the good with the bad, but also at the same time, it becomes such a challenge for us to see people beyond the things that we don't understand or to see people beyond the things that we don't like or to see people beyond the things that we've heard. And, um, if that's you, I just want to look in this camera and tell you, I see you and I appreciate you and keep thinking the way you're thinking, but don't allow the hurt of the past to shape the heart of your future. And so that's my spiel for tonight. Or whenever you watch this. And I'm sure some people will take things I say out of context because that's our culture. But I won't stop creating. Just because some people don't agree. Protect your heart. Keep living. Keep pursuing. And um, yeah. And I'll leave you with this. (laughs) <laughs> God is doing more than what you think you are. I mean, God is doing more than what you think he is and you're doing better than what you think you are. Again, you're doing better than what you think you are. And God is doing more than what you think he is. And um, I hope you have an amazing day. And um, if this resonates with you, just put in the comments, man, this was for me. But guard your heart, but don't change it. All right, talk to you guys soon.